This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at how to get started with Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to use the Media Import window. So now we've created our library. We've organized our events so we know where we're going to store stuff. Now we're going to import. I'm going to select the event that I want to put media into. And then I could click this button here that says Import Media. Or I could go up to this button that says Import Media. Or go up to the File menu, go down to Import Media. Any one of those three options would work, and I don't use any of them. I use, <laughs> I use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command-I. Whether you use File Import Media or Command-I or click one of the buttons, this opens up the Media Import window for Final Cut Pro 10. On the left are the devices and cameras and tape decks that I'm working with. In the middle is the media that I'm looking at, and on the right are the settings that I have to, to, to control importing media. If I had a camera attached or a tape deck attached, it would show up here. The more hard drives that I have attached would show up here, and this would include XAN servers and, with the 10.3 update, SMB servers where I can store both libraries and media on an SMB server. I can work with straight network storage for media playback, but it has to be SMB storage for or an XAN for the library to be stored on that, that external device. I can even create favorites. For instance, here, let's go back up. I have a folder that contains all of my training media that I use for the articles that I write or the webinars that I create. If I wanted to create a, um, a favorite, grab this Hummingbird folder, drag the icon of the, of the folder you want on top of the word Favorites, and now I've created a favorite which allows me to look at hummingbirds swing, uh, flying around a feeder. Well, I've got a, a favorite location called Edit Stock. This is footage that I shipped with my, my Final Cut 10.3 training, which features a film about Vince McIntyre. Vince McIntyre is a farmer, 67 years old, living in British Columbia, that farms 100 acres of farmland by hand, the way we did about 150 years ago, using horses and hand-drawn plows and, and lots and lots of hard work. Some beautiful visuals. We'll be working with some of that for today's webinar. Now, in real life, if I wanted to play this clip, I'd hit the space bar. I'd turn up the speakers, and I'd be listening to what Vince is saying. And if I wanted to say, I want to bring in the whole clip, I've noticed I've selected it. Okay, I could bring in the whole clip. Or if I go over to, where do I want to go? Let's go to here. Let's take a look at a different kind of footage. Let's look at some AVC HD footage, which is around here somewhere. There we go. Joe Santeno shot this. Now I can see actual thumbnails. If it's a QuickTime movie, I see a list view. If it's not a QuickTime movie, like an H.264 file, I can take a look at the images in a thumbnail view. And notice that I'm skimming the image. I'm just simply hovering the mouse over the image, and I'm able to quickly take a look at what uh, the image consists of. If the camera shoots both video and stills, I can switch between looking at videos or stills or see all the clips here. And I can drag a range to say I want to select just from here to here by click, hold, and dragging to select the in on the left, the out on the right, and I can bring in a range of a clip. In my case, though, I want to work with edit stock, and I want to bring in all the clips of him working with horses, so I'm going to select the horse folder. I've already created these folders in the finder and moved the clips into it. I want to bring in all of his interviews, and I'm going to bring in all of his woodworking. So I'm going to just select the folders that have the clips I want to bring in, which brings me to the right-hand side where I can determine what I want to do with it. Up here at the top, I can specify which library I want to store the media in. I'm going to stay with media, or I could create a new event, remember that's a folder, and give it a name and store it inside the library. This is a really, really important choice. This is where you determine whether the media that you're importing is going to be managed, stored inside the library, or external, reference, similar to what Final Cut 7 does, stored outside the library. If you are only working with this media for this 
project, this library, copy it to the library. It's going to make a copy of your file. So yes, your file size goes up, but your media is now going to be stored in the library, which makes backups and archives a whole lot easier. But we can't point to media, can't link to media, which is stored inside a library. So if you're shooting footage that, let's just say it's a wedding, import that wedding footage into the library. It's all going to be in one spot. You're not going to take elements of the Smith wedding and share it with the Brown wedding. That would be foolish. That would Nobody would be happy with you about that. But if you're doing, say, high school football, you would probably want to leave the footage outside the library because you're going to create a highlight reel of the game. Then for, for recruiting purposes, you're going to create highlight reels of key players showing them at their best, and you're going to probably want to do that across multiple games. And then you, maybe you want to do a, a retrospective of the season. You're going back into this media over and over and over again. Rather than try and put that all into one gigunda library... Instead, leave the media external on your hard drive, the same as we do with Final Cut 7, the same as we do with Premiere, and point to it. Managed media virtually guarantees, because the media is stored inside your library, that you'll never have to relink media, because it'll never go offline. But external media gives you more flexibility in terms of sharing media between projects without having to duplicate it. So there is no wrong answer. But if you're brand new to Final Cut, I would recommend using Copy to Library because it minimizes any problems that you're going to have until you learn more about the application. Keywords. We're going to talk more about keywords in just a minute. From right now, I'm going to make keywords based upon the folder that contains these clips as well as some others. Roles are an, a really big deal inside Final Cut but we don't need to know anything about roles to deal with Final Cut as we're getting started, so I'm going to ignore them for right now. This is your other huge option, transcoding. Transcoding, which is simply a fancy word that means convert, asks if you want to convert your camera native media into optimized media. And the answer is, most of the time, yes. If you're shooting MPEG-4, H.264, um, those you're going to want to absolutely convert to optimized media. Optimized media is going to give you a bigger color space within which to work. It's going to export faster. It'll render faster. You'll do better work with color grading. All good things. If you're shooting raw or log footage, you may want to do optimized media so you don't have to move this massive data set around. Optimized media will be shorter than raw. Sorry, optimized media will be smaller than raw or log footage. We'll use proxy media if you're doing multicam work. Proxy media is one quarter resolution. It's not designed for output, it's designed for small size. Proxy media would be used for multicam work. It would also be used for 4K when you want to shoot 4K, edit 4K, output 4K. Proxy media will decrease the stress on your system during editing. Then you switch back to camera native for final output. It will work great. Analyze and fix. I leave this off for video, because I can do it later, and there's a time hit here, and I turn it on for the audio. So if you want to know what my settings are for importing, those are the settings. So I've got my stuff selected. Click Import Selected. The Media Import window closes, and within scant seconds, my clips show up inside the browser. Nothing in projects, because I haven't created the project yet. All of my clips are inside media. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at how to get started with Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 208. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,400 movies, hundreds of hours, all in depth and all up to date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.